Welcome back to my channel! Listen, my waistline's just my sideline, nigga, so don't take time cause my hotline's bringing on me. And welcome back girl if you're already subscribed talking of subscription you already know what i'm gonna say baby be sure to subscribe subscribe to the chanel and yeah man let's get this show on the road i'm not even gonna apologize anymore for you know being away doing what i gotta do i'm not apologizing anymore because really and truly you know what apology means apology means you do something and you don't do it again i can't promise you that guys i cannot promise you that all i can promise is that i will do my best and then that's it there's nothing more we can do so you either accept it or you don't accept it it's up to you i don't really know what you want to do anyway i have decided for this, the rest of this week to basically do some sort of like story time week. The other day I was speaking with my friends and I was reminiscing on all the crazy things that have happened to me. They're not really that crazy, but I'm telling you, I've got stories for days. Like some of them I can't even say because it was just off me. I'm currently in the middle of editing some things that I've been doing like outdoors wise. So in the meantime, I thought I would be indoors, you know, and share with you guys some of my stories and because there's quite a few i thought i would make it a week so yes i will be sharing with you guys some of my stories over the period of a week and that means every day monday through sunday guys wish me luck i will try and be consistent with this i promise you because you know it's me that's coming to tell you guys is what i'm gonna do so obviously i need to back 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 up what i'm talking about you know what i mean before we go any further please look at my hair I mean, in fact don't even look at my hair because i'm not really too confident with it right now this is actually my first wig <sighs> you heard correctly i made a wig by myself for the very first time <laughs> literally i don't change my hair so as much as this looks like normal to me this is like oh my days because i do not change my hair my hair is either out slick back slick back <sighs> you've seen it or it's in the side like this or it's in the middle if i want to be a bit you know, I might do a bit of a short bob. That's it. That's why the DMX challenge was just not for me. I did not partake. Because if I did that, it would only be Brenda, Letitia, Keisha. Brenda, Letitia, Keisha. Three hairstyles. That's it. That's all I know. That's all I have. I will branch out one day. Might do a bit of colour. Pixie cut maybe in the future. Who knows? At this very second, these three are what works for me. Middle, side, out. Middle, side, out. No need to shake it all about. Anyways, this story is basically about the time I got fired. I don't even know what I'm going to call this video. And you know, they put me on CCTV and all this kind of stuff. Such a long story guys. I just... I just cannot. Work history. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. To be quite honest with you, I've been fired bare times. And I know it's not something to be proud of, but I laugh because it just means God doesn't want me there. He doesn't want me there. I'm not supposed to be working for the man. I'm supposed to be working for myself. That's just what God is telling me. That's why they keep firing me, firing me, firing me. As much as I should be upset about it, I'm very happy and very grateful. But let me tell you about this one time that it was really like it was a bit much she did too much let's rewind once again this is during uni times honestly guys you know uni was just a stressful time for me it was a stressful time let's talk about the first time i got fired actually let's talk about that every time i'm looking for a job these bad things happen if you guys remember my i got arrested story you will know exactly what i'm talking about i was looking for a job and then i went to these shops handing out my cv like a dickhead and you know what i really hate that handing out your cv like who who are you people that I'm here to beg you? But it is what it is. It's the process. We went to Aldo. I got the job there and then he told me to come the next day. Long story short, I went in the next day. I absolutely hated it. Now I know that I hate retail. I think at the time I thought I could do it. Or maybe I just wanted the job so badly. So I just done it. That is when I learned that people are just really annoying. You know you're a size 10. You're going to ask for a size 9 shoe. So I'm going to go up, get the size 9. Then I come back. You know it doesn't fit you. I know it doesn't fit you. Now you're going to send me up again. It's just too much. When the shop's empty they want you to just pretend that you're busy look busy so to just refold things that are already folded maybe reposition things that are already positioned in a certain way i don't know act like a mad person imaginary chores that's what they want you to do remember i was new to retail i didn't know this so when the shop's empty i just used to stand around like this and on top of that they gave me these new shoes like these really nice shoes actually so i think that's one of the perks that you get of working in alder 
which is really not good enough. I'm telling you now, it's not good enough. There were leather, I had to break them in, which meant that on that day, my feet were done. I could feel the blisters saying, hey, hey, hey. It was just not a great time. So when I had a chance to sit and relax, not even sit, because there are no seats, you're not even allowed to sit. That I knew, they told me you can't sit. So when I had when I had the time to myself, I would just stand in my corner. Lo and behold, because trust this stuff to happen to me, on my very first day, the general manager was making store visits. He goes outside of the shop to speak to my manager. They see me in the corner, just standing there like this. My sad face is actually just a joke. When I'm speaking, I'm a bit animated, you know, there's expression, but when I'm just still by myself, my face is literally like, this is not even it. This is not even it. Because I'm laughing and I'm thinking about it. I'm even putting a bit of effort into this. I'm seeing everybody do crazy things like moving a shoe like this, doing that, doing this. I didn't know that they were doing this because the general manager was outside. And I'm just here standing in the corner like this. And you know what? When I think about it, they are out of order. Because they could have said to me, or at least given me a heads up. They left me there to stand there like some potato. The conversation that they were having outside was, Oh, so who's that new girl over there? And then my manager, let's call him Tom. Tom was like, Oh, that's Norian. He was trying to upsell me. We got on. We did get on. Maybe he wanted me to be there. Maybe he believed in me. I don't know. But he was basically saying, That's Norian. You know, she's one of the new girls doing really well da, 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 great style and he just thought these were his exact words well what is she doing she's not really you know engaging blah 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 obviously just saying the truth okay just telling the truth he said to the guy that he should find me or something like that that's the only explanation that i have i'm sure he told my manager that i should he should get rid of me Cool. At the end of the day, I said to him, what time should I come in tomorrow? Because remember, it's my first day. I didn't get a timetable, didn't get anything. I said, what time should I come back tomorrow? And then he said, mm. Norian, you know, I just feel like you're not really engaging with everybody. I want to know that this is your passion. Man said that he wants to know that that's my passion. Now that's what you're driven to do. And that's what you wake up living, breathing. I was looking at this guy thinking he must be joking. He said, so tomorrow I'm actually going to give you the day off. Just think about if this is really what you want to do with your life, you know? Is this really what you want to do? And in my head I'm thinking, I really do not. Who knows how much I was getting paid? Either six, probably from six, no, seven to eight pounds. Something stupid like that. Or maybe even six. Who bloody knows? I went home and I was thinking, well, I've got the day off tomorrow. I went to do my nails. I watched TV, chilling, having a blast, thinking... Oh, now I've got a call Tom to let him know that, yes, this is my passion, Tom. Yes! He's crazy, but I'm going to call him because I need the coin. But I called him and was like, listen, I've had a think. I've had a real hard think. Thank you for this time of reflection that you've allowed me to have today. I've realised that this is my passion. This is where I want to be. This guy, right, said, yeah, really sorry, Noria, but it's not actually going to work out. I was just like... So you what? I'm thinking, mate, so you're firing me. Why didn't you fire me yesterday? He was just too scared. He was too scared to tell me to my face. So he sent me home to do it over the phone. What a coward. What a loser. That was the first time I ever got fired. The day after that, another place called me, which was the casino. That is nothing compared to the traumatic experience that I experienced at this new place. When I got fired at Aldo, the next day I got an interview for the casino. Long story short, got the job at the casino, started working there. Everything was going good, you know? The casino was cool. Everyone was just so nice. You know, you just get on with everybody. It was just a vibe. It was a great time. Everybody was kind of young, you know, which is good and bad sometimes because, you know, you just mess around. And that's probably why I liked it. Look at me. That's when I learned that casinos were open 24 hours a day. I had absolutely no idea because on my first day, they told me to come at 10. I'm thinking, come at 10 a.m. to the casino to do what? They don't, oh, they don't close, honey. They never close. They are open 24 hours, 24 seven. The only day that they were ever closed was Christmas day. The gamblers don't play. 
they are dedicated to losing money i just worked at the at the desk the reception desk i didn't know i wasn't dealing cards or anything i don't even know how to pay those things sign up members for membership during my work career at the casino it was a day where basically i went to because there was a cloakroom right next to us the person who was manning the cloakroom was gone there was someone you know that needed help so i thought to myself okay let me just go and help them it's quite simple you take a coat give the person a ticket this is why in this life you just mind your business mind the business that pays you i had no business going there they were doing works in the cloakroom area as well as the reception area they were doing works over there and rid of some tables changing tabletops all that kind of stuff the maintenance guy there he was lovely but i'm really sorry that was a very stupid thing that he did there was this big plank of wood that he left in the cloakroom it was just leaning against the wall to come back the next day to finish the job like some construction site when it's a cloakroom okay the people that used to work in there they used to run up and down sometimes you know anyways he left that leaning against the wall earlier that day so i now go take that man's coat no did he want it? he either wanted to get a coat or put it in i can't remember either way i ended up going into the cloakroom the jacket caught onto that wood panel that was leaning leaning against the wall i'm walking the thing fell on me bang, it hit my foot and it banged me right on my achilles heel listen to me when i tell you the pain the pain the pain because it was a big plank of wood it just hit my foot and i i went into shock i just dropped and i screamed all i know is that my blood was on the walls okay and it wasn't even a big cut but your achilles heel is like so sensitive honestly it's so sensitive if you were to like maybe slice it or injure it really bad tear it you will never walk again luckily for me it was just a bang on it as much as i was in pain i am still here walking today wearing heels running to conclusions live my best life they called me a taxi because i didn't want to go to hospital because i just thought it's whatever it's not that serious but the initial pain was crazy when i saw the cut i thought oh this is nothing but i should have gone took the next day off and went to the hospital they told me what i knew basically that i had um bruised my achilles tendon and that the inflammation would need to go down that's it really to just take it easy and kind of stay off my leg which when walking is like 70 percent of what i do i don't know how how we were supposed to do that because i was young and very stupid i was scared to call in sick i didn't know what to do people were telling me norian you know you can claim you can claim i was thinking no no i don't want to claim because in my mind i'm thinking a claim is like a big case you're gonna go to court you're gonna do this you're gonna do that i was scared i don't know i don't know why i was scared when i'm the one that was injured due to their incompetence do you know what i mean when you look there's certain things i'm just thinking what was i thinking two days after i went back to work because i was scared i really don't know why honestly even me talking about this really pisses me off pisses me off and everybody was like you know you can claim the reality and i was thinking no i don't want to claim i don't want to claim i was just scared fast forward maybe a year after let's say this was basically when you know things were going downhill we got new management some lady oh my gosh she is like the devil reincarnated she was the devil's girl like the devil in female form if there ever was to be one so let's call her linda okay not linda because it was actually a lady called linda oh my days maybe <laughs> janine because you know the name janine just because of EastEnders, sorry if her name is Janine, but the name Janine, it just reminds me a bit of, you know, evilness. Let's call her Janine. So Janine was married to the general manager. So she thought she was somebody special, like, okay then. But she used to come with her rules, stupid regulations that never made any sense, okay? She just wanted to be, she wanted to be that girl. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it is about women in power. That's one thing I will say. And that's one thing that we need to stop doing. I love to see women in power. I love to see women in high positions. But one thing I have noticed is a lot of the time women in power feel like they have something to prove women have this stereotype of being you know emotional being nice being sensitive a lot of the time when they get in power or in high positions they want to show like yeah i'm here and they're just horrible horrible because they have a point to prove that's just not it just be yourself sis anyways she was a horrible lady she was absolutely horrible she was not nice at all she was rude she was too strict I want to get you in trouble because you're one minute late i know i have a lateness problem okay i don't need to be told and some people may say well then it's your fault i know it's my fault but give me a chance 30 seconds late 
30, all these things like just psychopathic behavior what can happen in 30 seconds that i'm not here and i work to the big team if i'm not here it doesn't even make a difference just cut people some slack okay Janine. They introduced this stupid machine because before you could just come in, come out, you just sign your name. They introduced this stupid machine, fingerprint machine. First of all, right, I'm not into that stuff. Clocking fingerprints, that to me is Illuminati at its finest. I fought, I fought, I declined, I did a lot and it didn't work. It was basically you, you do it or you go, mate. So, you know, I had to do it. <laughs> I hated it. The fingerprint machine, it was quite far from the workstation. So you need to be at the fingerprint machine at a certain time to get to your state. It just became like a military camp and I hate feeling like that. I don't like feeling, you know, trapped. I don't like feeling like everybody's watching. I hate that and that's when I start to feel like this is not for me. This is not for me. I was having lateness problems, yes. I have always had lateness problems. Lately, I'm getting better, but I just feel like it's not that serious, okay? I'm not operating on anybody, okay? If I'm late to the operating room, I get it. What is the problem here? It's not that serious. I would rather employ someone who's late than someone who never comes in. My punctuality was 100%. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about it. My punctu- no attendance <laughs> one two minutes late you guys want to make rah 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 noise get your priority straight i was always there even ashanti said i'm not always on time i'm not always there when you know oh damn it anyways that's not the point so i had a few meetings disciplinaries warnings about my lateness but for some reason i just couldn't shake it off me but rebuke that spirit in jesus name all these meetings after all these warnings the lateness was just still coming and i used to say to myself norian stop and i think i used to be so late because i didn't live far from the place and i used to drive there as well so it could take me 15 minutes to drive there but you see, even that mentality is not right. Just because it can take me 15 minutes to get there doesn't mean I should leave my house 15 minutes before I need to be at work. Do you know what I mean? These were the problems here. Risking it all. Last minute queen. Who rebuked that spirit in Jesus? I just used to make up stories and stories and stories. Some of them were true though. I'm very exposed to myself, but it's true. Some of them were true. Now I don't even lie about things like that anymore, you know. But before you have to cover your back, especially when fingerprints are involved, you gotta cover your back, sis. And it got me through for a while. It really did, okay? But then after a while, they started getting really tight on me. They said to me, if I'm late one more time, you are done. You are out of here. You are out. So that's when I was on my A game. I was on my A game. Until one very sad day. One very sad day came. Oh, one very sad day came. There were times when I would have to work on Sundays. But when I did, I would always request to work later. Because my service starts at 11. 11 even there i'm saying 11 because i still come late to church we need to rebuke that spirit in jesus name ho i went to church one sunday church was finished i was just there talking 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 with people knowing damn well i have to be at work at three church finishes at 1 30. my church is in north london north london to stratford on the a406 it should not take me any more than let's say 40 minutes no anyways you calculate i was doing the talking doing the ha 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 hello uncle hello auntie you calculate that maybe that makes half an hour so i had an hour left to get to work okay in my mind, I'm gonna get there on time. But then afterwards you have someone that says, oh, can you drop me here, can you drop me there? So I did one drop off, I did two drop offs. By the second drop off, I thought, <laughs> time is not on your side. You know when time's going slow and then all of a sudden, it's a whole different time. That is exactly what happened. To the point where you're trying to look on every single device to see if the time that you're seeing is the right time, but it is. It's the right time. You are late. Zooming on the road, zooming on the road, trying to get to where I need to go. I parked. The parking was absolutely terrible. I parked in Disabled Bay. I'm very sorry and I apologise. Please don't judge me for this. It's really bad and I know it's bad and I'm very ashamed of my actions. But I had to cover my back. I had to cover my back. I ran up the stairs, running. There's even a staff entrance. Didn't even go through that way because like I told you, that staff entrance is so far that you just be late. So I just went up, went through the main entrance, ran, went to my locker, put all my stuff in there. And then afterwards, this is where it all went downhill. I thought I was a smart girl because that fingerprint machine used to go bust. There were times where it used to go bust. When it goes bust, 
you just notify HR it's not working can you please um, log me in to be here at this time I thought you know what I'm gonna do I'm not even gonna clock in otherwise I'm gonna be exposed so I'm gonna go straight to HR and say to them excuse me my thing isn't working please log me in I've come in at uh, 2 50 or whatever I can't even remember what I said something along those lines I had to report and tell her so I sent her an email is saying Janine you know I'm just making you aware that I came at this time blah de blah de blah de blah the reason why I did that especially is because they said to me if I'm late one more time you are done you are out of here I thought yes Norian you are the smartest of them all you are a Vanessa but little did I know for once in my life, the finesse got severely finessed. Janine, for some reason, like I told you, she had a severe vendetta. I thought the situation was done, finished. Weeks go by, I'm coming on time, not having any issues. And one of the girls from security, she's working security, she came to me and said to me, Norian, you do, what's going on with you and Janine? I'm thinking, what, as far as I'm concerned, you know we're on good terms now things are things are good that's what i'm saying to you people are fake in this world she was being so nice to me because i didn't know what she was plotting behind my back i said wow what's going on she said janine is requesting for the cctv footage of this this that date and i'm thinking why then it came to me that is the day that i was late and lied about the whole series of events oh my heart she said to me that i haven't given it to her because when she every time she has requested it i've been here because really and truly she's not even allowed to do that because her face is so sour okay she was quite scary so people used to do as she pleased but you know us women we can see through one another sometimes so the girl in security says that she would be like she said to me i haven't given it to her because once you can't request it i'm letting you know the situation so i thought okay i'm safe I'm safe, as long as she's here, I'm safe. But no, sis went on holiday. Sis went to do enjoyment. During that time, she obtained the CCTV footage from these guys in security. All this time, I don't know. Remember, I'm thinking I'm safe. Everything's great. I think I was late one more time. I know, I know what you're thinking. I know it already. Okay, you don't even need to tell me. Um, I had a meeting. They said to me, Norian, we were going to have a meeting with you. So they called me into the office. And I'm thinking, oh, they're coming to talk to me about lateness. I don't really care. I don't really care. I thought she'd asked me about the most recent time. Lo and behold, she didn't even care about that. She secured her bag. Her bag being the CCTV footage. She asked me, why was I late on this day? Why was I late on that day? Just bringing all these dates. Then when we got to that date when I was late, that I described to you guys. She said, so why were you late? on this day again and I was like me being cocky I was like well I emailed you I was given all this mouth but really and truly I was shook and she's like to me so what happened on the day why didn't you clock in I said well if you read my email you would know that I came into work okay and she was like how did you come in I said uh the staff entrance even given attitude on top oh my god and then what happened why didn't you clock in I said because the clocking machine wasn't working doing move like a snake and she said okay so what did you do after that i said well i went to hr like the procedure states and i told them what happened blah de blah de blah de blah and i've even emailed you to let you know of the situation and she was like okay so what's this she turns the computer screen around and there you see me on the cctv oh my heart sank I felt like I felt like I was in CSI at the police station okay I felt like it was judgment day God will show me my tapes that's how I felt the embarrassment that I felt you see me walking you see me putting things in my locker and most importantly you don't even see me attempt to use the machine she was narrating my actions okay so there we see you uh, coming up the stairs uh, we see you here not even attempting to use the machine. We get it. We get it. I lied. I'm a liar. I'm a scammer. When I say she's the devil, her eyes were so piercing that like she was looking through my soul. She was so angry. She was so livid. Till now, when I say the story, I just feel like it's a bit extreme. 
It's a bit extreme if you ask me. She proceeded to say, we are suspending you. It just felt like the arrest. You're being suspended till further notice. La, 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 la. And even then I was still giving mouth. They escorted me to the door. Do you know how embarrassing it is to be escorted like I'm a thief or something? What the hell? So they sent me a letter after letting me know that I'll be having a hearing, disciplinary hearing to decide what will be my fate. If I want to bring anybody or anything, I should let them know. So suspension is with pay to be quite honest with you. So I wasn't too fast. I had two weeks free. I was scared though. Cause I didn't actually want to go if I'm being com completely honest. I didn't. So I'm waiting. They gave me a date and I said, well, we need to reschedule it. One, because I wanted more time off and two because I wanted to scare them. I was like, well, I can't do this date because my lawyer cannot actually attend the meeting on this date. Please, I had no lawyer. Let me just tell you now, I'm not even free solicitor, nothing. Could I even spell lawyer? My lawyer, my lawyer. They probably knew I was chatting rubbish, but they have to honor their words and honor my rights. So they gave me another week to get my lawyer to accompany me on that meeting. When the date came, they were like, oh, where's your lawyer? I said, mm, she's sick, went to the meeting. Part of me thought, you know what, I'm actually gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. But yeah, long story short, it wasn't a great time. It wasn't a great time. It wasn't a great time. And it's only right. I was taking the mic. I get it, but I just feel like they just did a little bit too much. So yeah, they fired me. And yeah, as soon as they fired me, I went and made a claim, honey, for the accident that happened to me on that day. I made a claim on their asses. I got the cash money. So that was my compensation, okay? I should, to be fair, if I had claimed way earlier, I would have got way more money. But it's okay, I still got their coins, okay? I'm very satisfied with the cash that I received. It was her karma because she was stressed out out okay she didn't want to go to court she didn't want to do all these kind of things i wanted to push i wanted to push this but my advisor on the claim said you know what i think this is a very good offer we don't want to push and then you know because that lady she's a sneaky devil she could have pulled something she could have pulled she could have pulled a quick one on me that's the story of how let's say that's just how i got fired again <laughs> just don't lie guys don't lie especially when they're cctv i've learned now I've learnt. If you're gonna finesse, finesse properly. Think about your moves. I should have at least tried to pretend to use the machine. Because the CCTV is not very clear. As long as I was by the machine, pretending, you would have seen some things. You get what I'm trying to say? But I think even the fact, I, it's not even just that, it's the fact that I lied about the time I got there. Yeah, I'm saying I was there at 2.50. It's just, it's just too many lies. Too many lies. Let me know down below things that you hate about work. I want to know something that really grinds your gears about your workplace, your job, just something, whatever. Join me next time. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Share this video. And I will see you guys next time in my next video for another story time, okay? Because remember, we are doing this story time week, honey. We are. We are here for the whole week. We are going to be sharing and caring.